Success in this world sucks if you don't have somebody to share with. We got a bunch of dudes to share this with, man. 7,000 career rushing yards, man. Yeah. From the Bet MGM studio, we welcome you to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4 with the Titans head coach. I'm Mike Keith, and even though we're over 48 hours removed from it, division wins still feel good. You got to enjoy, you gotta enjoy it for a minute. Yep, you're doing that. It's back to work, though. Yeah, it's back to work, I know, but your guys battled and fought. And you got it from up and down the roster, what you needed to win in Indy. Yeah, they came out ready to go. I mean, they came out ready to play. And, uh, you know, we were able to take advantage of some turnovers uh, early and turn them into to touchdowns. We scored, you know, three for three in the red zone, which was which is a huge part of this football game. All right, good setup, Coach. Let's go into some of the plays. Mike Vrabel's six-pack. We've got two, so it's a 12-pack. That's what it'll end up being. Let's take a look at one of those big defensive plays. First possession of the game, Indy's moving the ball, but then Danico Autry shows up. Boy, he did, and uh, we, we sure are glad that we have him. And, uh, you know, they on this particular they, uh, rep, they decided to slide to Jeffrey Simmons and left Danico there on uh, super guard, and, you know, we were able to beat him, and, you know, that, that was the challenge that we had for Danico when he came through. We've got to put it in the end zone. When Bud Dupree recovers at the 32-yard line, you got to finish the drive, and that's exactly what the Titans did. Yep, we give these guys, you know, an opportunity to go out there and execute, and uh, we had a play downs inside the 10, the play fake here, which, you know, Derek got us down there on a pass. Guys helped him get down there, but you saw the play fake. Everybody sucked up, and, and we couldn't get it to Bobby fast enough. Bobby Trees, Robert Woods, Four catches, 30 yards, and there is his first touchdown as a Titan. Fourth straight game to open the 2022 season where the Titans have scored a touchdown on their opening possession. 7-0 Titans had to just go 32 yards for that. After a three and out, here comes the offense again. Maybe the best overall drive of the day. Yep, it was a long, you know, we con converted, and uh, then we got it to the big fella there. Um, you know, he's able to beat the corner, and, you know, we got to take care of the ball here, make sure we're not flipping it out there too soon. But, uh, you know, we'll talk to him and remind him about that. But, you know, a lot of great effort, but, you know, Derek's able to beat the corner there and then outrun everybody to the end zone. He topped 7,000 yards in this game for his career, his 29th 100-yard game. Henry, 22 rushes, 114 yards in that score. It's quickly 14 to nothing, Titans. It's 17 to three in the second quarter when Tier Tart makes a play. He does. You know what I mean? The big fellow's pushing there against two guys. He, you know, sees the quarterback come up, and then, you know, this is the old catch in the beach ball. You know, you just <laughs> got both hands up, and, you know, he's able to, uh, to find the football. But this was, uh, this was a great play. And uh, he was one of the players of the game on defense, the soft hands. Big man with soft hands, and he sticks the landing right there. He absolutely stuck the landing. A 10.0 for Tier Tart. Needless to say, his first career interception. And that sets up this play. A first touchdown for Chig Okonkwo, and what a throw by Ryan Tannehill. Yep, you know, went through, and Ryan progressed good in the pocket and changed the arm angle and is able to find Chig and, you know, fight through some contact right there. Here he is, Tannehill. Slings it almost sidearm, and Akakwo is able to beat Leonard into the end zone. Thank goodness he wasn't in between those two collisions right there. That would have been rough. I know. No doubt about it. Touchdown Titans 24 to 3. It's 24 to 10 at the half. And then early in the third quarter, the Colts are able to make it 24-17. 
Titans get a spark from special teams. Ryan Stonehouse punting to Naheem Hines. Watch 42, Joe Jones. Yeah, it keeps running, covers a lot of ground, open field tackle, and a great hit right there. You know, we, our guys have really understood how to try to cover these punts. They got to keep running, they got to cover some ground, cast the net, and be great tacklers. And, you know, this is a huge deal for us to be able to flip the field. Stonehouse averages over 52 yards per punt in the game, over 47 yards net. That tackle right there by Jones, one of the reasons why that net is staying up. Excellent coverage units. Speaking of excellent, what about Titans fans who went to Indianapolis and took part in the Titans Road Rally Saturday night and then Sunday morning presented by Old Smoky Distillery? Your fans gave you a big effort this week. They, they did, and we appreciate it, and it's fun to be able to go there and win on the road when they come to support us. And, you know, those are the people that we see when we're going down the tunnel or the ones that come down behind our bench as the fourth corners, uh, you know, getting down there toward the end. And the Titans pay them back big time with a 24-17 win over the Colts. We'll look at six plays from down the stretch to see how the Titans salted it away when the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4, continues after this. So we're here at 16 Bit Bar and Arcade tonight for the Titans Pep Rally. It's part of our Road Rally Weekend and it's a fun place for fans to hang out. We have a ton of fans travel in from Nashville for the game in Indianapolis and it's just cool to provide them with a space where they can build community together, they can hang out together for the game. It's great building on community. We have a big community back in Chattanooga. Go out and see everybody, meet new people. It's fantastic. We're gonna take over Andy. I see blue, I see red everywhere. So join camaraderie and join just room for the fans and just enjoying the family atmosphere for those Titans. What's up, baby? Let's tighten it up, baby. The king is here, baby. The king is here, baby. Tighten up! The Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4 continues as we take a look at the second half when the Colts had multiple opportunities to score a potential tying touchdown, but the Titans wouldn't let it happen. How do you stop drives? Well, how about a quarterback sack and a fumble? Those usually, that's a good place to start, Mike. <laughs> that is a great place to start. And, you know, Weave comes in and just is able to get that long arm in there, get the ball out of there. Um, you know, would have loved to be able to get this one there. I thought Mario was getting it. and you know, But, uh, again, Weave's able to, to make a play here these last couple weeks, just, you know, getting the ball off the quarterback, and you can see him just extending and reaching with that far arm and, you know, using his length. You know, that's just a, a, you see what those guys are working on each and every week and whether you beat the guy clean or not, you know, using that, that reach and that length to, to get the ball out. How about getting the ball out on a third and one play and this time recovering it? It's third and one. Yep. Taylor's going to pick up the first down, but... Then Joe Schobert's able to rake the ball out of there, and, you know, they got a little bit of push, and they were going to convert, and, you know, Joe kind of saves the day. You know, they're going to have the ball first and 10 outside the 20, and, you know, you can see him just as the running back starting to go down here, you know, rake it out of there, and that's the old vet move right there. There it is, 52, ripping it out. Excellent recovery by Fulton, alert play. Okay. One more chance for the Colts. They complete a long pass to the Titans, 22. Let's look at the three plays, how the Titans end up stopping them. Hines at right guard, nothing. Well, it's been kind of that way the entire day, being able to stop the run right there. You know, you can see Tier come over, and, you know, there's a great wall. There's no seams, and, you know, guys are able to gang tackle, no one-on-one -on -one tackles, just like we talked about. Second down and 10 upcoming. They're going to go to Hines on second down and 10, but this time through the air and it doesn't work. Yep, so we had good, you know, deep coverage and, you know, quarterback checked it down and you can see that, uh, you know, Rogers there and, and, and this is a great tackle on a really good player out in space. This was a huge play for us and, you know, gives us a chance to line up and get this third down going. Roger <clears throat> McCrary, seven tackles in the ball game, continuing to make plays. That brings up third and 13. Let's go back to Danico Autry. Well, you can see these guys are working in tandem there, working a game, and, you know, they're able to, uh, you know, Danico is able to pick and drive, and, 
you know, get another huge play there that knocks them back into uh, long field goal range. And, you know, we got some good push there, and they ultimately missed it. McLaughlin will miss the 51-yard field goal, giving the Titans the ball at the 41-yard line. Henry for two yards. Henry for four yards. It's third and four. A first down will end it. The Titans end it with this pass. Yep, I thought this was well executed and, and well designed. Um, you know, Derek's able to kind of pull some guys with him. Ryan gets on the edge, and you know, Chig's right there, and you know, gets the secures the pass, and you know, just makes sure we get a thing tucked away and then stays in bounds, and we're able to go with the victory formation. Three straight knees will end it. The Titans win a hard fought one from the Colts, 24 to 17. It took everybody. It did, and everybody contributed, and. You know, that's the way it's going to be sometimes. And we, we don't mind it, but, uh, you know, we, we know there's a lot to improve on, and we're excited to get back to work. Back to work, the Titans go. We're going to be talking about what's upcoming. But coming up next on the Mike Vrabel Show, the genuine Titan, a young man who's trying to encourage a lot of young people about the value of education. Stay with us. The Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4, continues with Epic Western's Genuine Titan. And this comes courtesy of our friends at WKRN. They have an amazing program, Take a Titan to School. Well, we got to tag along with them and see a Titan starter, who happens to be a rookie, visit a local elementary school and tell the youngsters all about the value of his education and how it actually factors into his NFL career. Nicholas Petit Freer. It's been a fantastic 2022 for Nicholas Petit Freer. Petit Freer was not only drafted by the Tennessee Titans in last spring's NFL draft. Six months later, he's now the team's starting right tackle. Football is a bigger part of MPF's life than it's ever been, but he has not forgotten the lessons that his amazing, resilient mom taught him. After all, the big man calls Loris Petit Freer his hero because of her wisdom, her love, and her example. For his mom, everything, and I mean everything, started with school. She knew the importance of academics and she knew what it would allow me to do and what opportunities I'd be able to get if I had a great education. My mom was the first person in my, um, in my family to ever graduate college, for one of the first people to ever graduate high school as well. And when she was having me, that was something that she knew that she wanted to emphasize to me when I grew up. Loris Petit Frere was a senior in high school when Nicholas was born. It was the two of them, and his mom set the example. She finished high school, and then, with the help of grandparents, she finished college. That's why grades came first when young Nicholas went to school. It was ingrained in him at an early age. Last week, Nicholas Petit Frere tried to pass along the same message to a group of fourth graders. Oh, what's up? How y'all doing? What up? What up? What up? <laughs> WKRN has a great program called Take a Titan to School. <laughs> Students write in to provide reasons why their school deserves a visit from a Tennessee Titans player. Jamison Frazier did just that, and BGA was selected to receive a visit from NPF. The kids got to take Nicholas to class and learn about catapults. Then they got to ask him their question. A flex move? Well, I mean, I, I don't normally have to make tackles because we don't we don't get rid of the ball and give it to the other team. But let's say if I pancake somebody, you know, like, you know, just kind of just a little flex like this. One thing that they learned is that to be an NFL player, you have to work out your mind just as much as your body. A lot of guys in the NFL, if you really tested them in terms of like, hey, how much do you know not only about their offense, but about other things that they learned, like you had to have some sort of aptitude to retain and learn information at a very fast pace and a very fast level for you to be able to be in the NFL. Because if you don't, you'll get played out. Petit Frere isn't going to get played out anytime soon. His upside seems to be through the roof. And as he becomes a bigger name Titan over the next few years, expect to see him out stressing the value of education to as many kids as possible. I love education. Education is one of the few things that I really want to make sure I put a lot of emphasis into in terms of helping people grow and helping schools develop. I mean, my opportunity for me to go to a school like Berkeley Prep High School 
was through me being great academically in middle school. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to have opportunities to help kids have that same um, avenue to go and learn and get an education, get a scholarship, and try to become better through academics. Do you guys need help with it? Let me see. Well, we can help him out, James. Why not? We'll help him out. Come on. <laughs> Nicholas Petit Frere, thank you, Amy Wells, for that great report. When he came on his pre draft visit, he might have been the first guy in last year. I knew right away. He was the kind of guy you wanted in this building. Well, he's just what an amazing story, first of all, and just a, what a great role model that his mom is and being able to finish school and make it important and, and realize and press upon him how important it is. And, you know, there's some times where, you know, we don't have to be as smart, Nick, and we just have to go block the guy and, and that uh, is across from you. But uh, it, it's impressive what he's done just as a rookie so far, stepping in there and, and being able to be a mainstay for us. Epic Western's genuine titan. When we come back, we're going to know our foe this week, the Washington Commanders. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. The Mike Vrabel Show coming to you from the Bet MGM studio, presented by Shift 4. It's time to know your foe, the Washington Commanders. We haven't been to Washington since 2014. Colt McCoy was the quarterback there. There, there you go. And we've, I think we've only played them once since uh, we've been here together. So, you know, it'd be important to get to know these guys and our team get to understand who they are. One and three coming off a loss to the Dallas Cowboys, 25 to 10. Carson Wentz, a quarterback that you know. Yep. And yeah, it's a quarterback that, uh, you know, we just can't let him get hot. We got to get him off his rhythm and he's got some really good weapons. Talking about Antonio Gibson out of the backfield who can run it and can catch it, and then Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel having excellent years. They're finding ways to get these guys the ball. They're dynamic, whether it's down the field or, or out of the backfield, even sometimes where they put Samuel. And Jahan Dotson, an outstanding rookie. Cole Holcomb on defense with 32 tackles. Derek Forrest has the lone interception. Jamin Davis leads the team with three sacks from his linebacker. Yep, coach. he can pressure. They move him around. They put him on the edge. He can really run. He's very athletic. They've got a bunch of guys up front on defense. They do not lack uh, speed or length over there. Yeah, good defense, undoubtedly. All right, when we come back, Mike Vrabel's Nissan Keys to Victory. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show. We take it on the road to FedEx Field this Sunday, noon kickoff. Titans and the Commanders having to work to say Commanders. Yeah, that doesn't just roll off it the tongue. It doesn't roll off the tongue, undoubtedly. But Washington. Washington, I kind of liked football team. I thought that was kind of clever. I thought that was a holding. Well, you know, it was a, holding, a placeholder. Yes. It was a placeholder. Indeed. The Commanders are one and three, but the Titans can't be worried about that. They've got to take care of the Titans. So let's look at the Nissan Keys to victory and when you start off like the Titans do and you want to do the important things to be able to win the football game, where do you start? Let's see. Well, you got to win third down. Well, these are going to be critical possession downs. You know, I mean, I'll tell you that that records mean nothing. I think you referenced that just a second ago. Records don't mean anything. All that matters is our preparation this week and ultimately what we do in the game. You know, they're good on third down defensively. We've been pretty good. Uh, took a step back, I felt like, last week. but. You know, those possession downs are critical. You're going to have to have, to score points in this league, you have to have some conversions along the way. And uh, I think on Sunday it'll be critical and see who wins that third down battle. Well, Washington's offense is 45% on third down, that which is impressive. Co correct. And, and, and we understand that, how good they've done and kept it to third and short. Um, you know, they've got a mobile quarterback and they've got guys that can, you know, create, you know, and break tackles and, and pick up third down. So, you know, that's going to be a huge key for us on, on, uh, on Sunday. All right. When the third down battle is something that's a key, the next key is be great on punt coverage. Well, we have to make sure that, that we're continuing to cover these punts, and this has been a weapon for us. But they've got an excellent punter. One of their best special teams players on their team is uh, their punter, Tressway. Left-footed again. Uh, he's, he's banging the ball. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to have to be able to take advantage of those, those long kicks and create some – some return yardage, 
but uh, we're, we're going to have to continue to make sure that this punt coverage is flipping the field and it is able to give us some some you know, drive, some really good drive starts. The Titans certainly won the punting game on both sides on Sunday. Key number three, win the turnover mark. And that was at the end of the day the, the difference in the game the other day. Uh, we've gotten back to, to even, you know, on the year as far as the turnovers and the ones that we've given up and the ones that we've gotten. So, you know, if we can continue to, to climb and make that a priority, take care of the football, keep having guys attack it, hammer it, rake it, tip it up or knock it out of the quarterback's hand, and hopefully we can intercept them uh, too. We're allowed to do that as well. Absolutely. Joe Schobert ripping it out. Yeah, that rake. 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 Let's do more of that. More coming up next week on the Mike Vrabel Show. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Tighten up.